Hey everyone, John Deere here from John Deere's Embroidery Legacy. Today I'm going to take you to a very strange place, the mind of a digitizer. We're going to actually do a design from beginning to end. It's a very simple logo that I was sent, and as a favor, I'm digitizing it for somebody. And I'm gonna take you through the thought process. I'm gonna talk about the theory involved, why I'm layering the way I am, what densities I'm using, the directions of stitches. So you'll see all of that come to play to finish a logo from start to finish. So anyways, I hope you enjoy this. Now I'm ready to start digitizing and I brought in this artwork and I sized it to the exact size that the, uh, the person wanted which was three and a half inches in width. And then I locked the artwork in place so I know it's not going to move. Then I'm going to go to my set scale and my scale that I digitize at is a 600% scale. And I'm just going to pan over to the screen so they can see this object. And the first thing I'm going to do is this fill that is in the very background. So I'm going to go to my digitize close shape. I'm going to go to my fill stitch. It is a tatami stitch, which is the fill. I'm going to keep it at around a 15 degree angle so that I know the angle will pretty much oppose all of the other stitch directions that are going to go on top of this. And I'm going to over stitch to adjust for push and pull compensation on the open ends and off to the side. And now when I hit the enter button, I can see if I turn my uh, true view on that I have my uh, fill stitch down and my stitch angles are conducive to the push and pull of the design. Now I can change that to any color that I want, so if I want to make that, let's say, a light, lighter color, I can, but usually what I'll do is as soon as I finish a color and I'm happy with it, then I'm going to select that object and I'm going to tell it to hide the selected. That way it's still there in my sequence view, but now I can continue on to the next color and not have to worry about seeing the stitches there as an obstacle in my way. Now for the next color, I'm going to do all of the satin stitches around the globe itself. So I'll choose a different color of thread. I'm going to choose a digitized block, make sure that I'm on satin stitch. And I'm just going to start right here on the design. And I'm going to do this little block first. Now the software does automatically join closest point. So I know that as long as they are touching, the software will automatically path its uh, way throughout the design logically and not put in unnecessary jumps and trims. So I know that these two are touching, that's gonna be fine. And I'll just continue to go around this object and now I can put in this piece right here. And again, these are touching, so I'm not gonna have any issue whatsoever. And then I'll continue right here to this point and I'm gonna hit the enter button and then if I turn the true view on you'll see there's my stitch at this point I'm gonna to go to digitize open shape and right where I left off I'm going to put a couple of zigzag stitches traveling back and forth that's so that when I do my next object as a satin stitch it's going to actually touch and join closest point Otherwise, I would have an unnecessary jump and trim between those two objects. And then I can continue on and do the objects because I know these are going to touch and I don't have to worry about separation of the stitches. Now, I know that when I get to this point up here, these ones are going to touch for sure. I can see that they're actually touching. And now I'm gonna go right to here, enter, go back to my digitize open shape, put a point right from there to there. It's just one tiny little stitch, but that's vitally important because if I did not put that there, then they would not end up connecting when they were done. And there I actually had, I didn't have a satin stitch, so if I ever make a mistake, I can always go in and do a quick undo, go back to digitize blocks, go back to my fill outline, not uh, running stitch outline, and let's just do that object one more time, then continue on, do this object to here, and then I just have to put down four more points. Let's turn the true view off. I'm gonna have this one right here, too, and I'm making sure these are all curved inputs. These are also curved inputs. These are curved inputs, and this is a curved input right here. And when I hit that enter, I can see that I have nice curved stitches all the way around, turn the true view on, and it's pretty close to the actual shape. Now I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna hide that color, 
and once I hide the selected, they told me that they wanted this area right here on the inside of that green four-pointed four leaf to be a different color. So I'm going to choose a different color, and now what I'm going to do is go back to digitize blocks. I have my fill with my satin stitch, and I'm going to put a slight angle on this as I move forward, and I'm just going to end up doing something like this. This is all straight points right here. Then I'm going to come over to this side, and I'll just basically do all straight points coming back and I'm going to leave a little bit of a space but not enough of a space that it's not going to register a trim. If I look here there is no trim, it's still connected and then I'll come down to the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing where I put it on a little bit of an angle but this time I'm going to put a piece right here, right over here and then make it a little wider so the center part of this actually is close to the size that I want it to be right in here. Now I'm going to take that object and I'm going to select it and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to object uh, properties and I'm going to turn off the auto spacing and turn it on manual. Now I'm also going to come here and go to metric. I was in inches because I was measuring my artwork but now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go to auto spacing. The default spacing for microfiber and I will change this later but the default spacing is 0.38. I'd probably want this to be about 0.55. And if you look here, it's going to uh, make the density lower. I can actually see now, if I look here before, let's just undo. You can see how much density I've taken out of that. I want to reduce the density on that layer because I do not want to have hard stitches in the design. So then I've done my next color and now I can move on to the green leaves. Now we'll do the same thing. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to hide the selected so I have my original artwork back. I'm going to choose yet another color that I'm going to see. So I'll choose a blue color and I'm going to choose my digitized blocks. And here I can start pretty much at any part of the design. Let's start right up here and that's going to be a straight to a straight. And then I can come in and do straight, curve, straight, curve, straight, curve, and then I can continue straight curve and I'll just work around this object so that I'm doing a series of straight and curve points something like this until I get right back to here and then I'm going to make sure this one is straight and hit the enter button then I can come here and do this and let's just go like this backspace if there's ever a point that I don't like these are all curves and then I can come here and let's turn the true view off for a second so that I'm not seeing a bunch of unnecessary things. Curve or straight there, curve, straight, curve, straight, curve. Just go around this corner. Make sure that I follow straights and curves on either side and bring this one to straight as well. Hit enter. Continue with this one, cutting it short a little bit. And then straight curve, straight curve, straight curve. Now keep in mind, I am at a six to one scale. So this means that because I'm zoomed in significantly, even though the artwork might look like it's off a little bit, that would be too much, but even if it looks like I'm off you know, a millimeter or so, that's really not going to have any dramatic effect to the outcome of the design because we are zoomed in to a 6 to 1 scale. We're 600% larger than the original design. So any little flaws that you're going to see will not be really visible when you're done. Come here, curve straight, curve straight, curve straight. Work my way around this one. And then again, curve straight, curve straight. And let's go curve and then straight. And then come it to this point. And we'll just finish off this little area. And now everything is going to connect to each other. There's no jumps and trims. Turn the true view on, I can see that. I'm going to now come in and I'm going to highlight that object. And I'm going to again go to my object properties and I'm going to go off of my auto spacing and this one I'm going to put at about 0.45 I'm going to reduce the density a little bit as well 
because I know that it's going to, you know, uh, have a little bit more, uh, I guess, three layers or four layers now on top of each other will create some harder stitches. And I'm also going to reduce the pull comp a little bit on that so it gives me more of a defined image. So now, if I look at my colors, and let's just grab those and let's unhide all of them, I can see that I've done my first four colors, everything's in place properly, stitch angles are correct, I know it's not going to be too hard because I reduce the density on a couple of the layers that are there, and now all I have to do is my lettering. Now all I have to do is the lettering, so I'm going to pan over a little bit, I'm going to go back to my green color because I know that is the same color as the outlines around the globe, and I'm going to turn off my true view, I'm going to go to my digitized blocks, make sure that I am actually on a uh, satin stitch, which it is, and then I'm going to very quickly just go in and digitize this font. Now keep in mind I'm going to be going a little quicker and not explaining quite as much uh, within these. Uh, I am making sure that I'm cutting my stitches short in certain areas. So you can see right here I've actually exaggerated that and I'm going to make sure that I exaggerate this one here and then hit enter and then I'm going to make sure that I have this piece which I know is going to join closest point. I'm going to do this little piece all by itself, hit enter. Here I'm going to cut short the top part of this A. Then I can go to a straight, cut short the bottom part right here, and do that piece. This is going to be also closest point, so I'm going to cut short that part of the design. Make sure I cut short the top. I know that these are going to join closest point, so they do intersect, so I know the software will automatically assign those. This one I'm going to overstitch a little bit into the bottom and then I'm going to go and do the curve at the top here. This lettering is pretty tiny at a 6 to 1 scale. Make sure I cut short the open ends. Then I can come here and do this point. Exa exaggerating the lettering ever so slightly as I'm moving. Going to a straight and then back to a curve and just come here like that and I know that it joins closest point there. Here I'm pretty sure that I'll be joining across the top there but I'm going to go to my digitize open shape and now I'm going to make sure that I'm right here and I'm going to put a point here, here, here and I'm going to go right into this top piece right here and then I'm going to come in and do a digitize block and I'm just going to do a tiny little object here. There's only going to be about three stitches in the top there. Go back to my digitize open shape. Make sure that I follow my way back down. That way if I look at this in true view I have a stitch penetration and I'm actually uh, hiding the stitch between these objects. So now as I continue on with my digitize blocks I'm going to cut short this shape and I'm going to go all the way down to here. I know that the D is going to be close enough to touch and if it's not I'll move it ever so slightly. It's very rare that I get artwork that's kerned perfectly for embroidery. So usually I'm always going in and making small adjustments to designs as I finish. Now here I could do a couple things. I could digitize that E again or I could just duplicate this one and slide it right over here and do something like this. But then keep in mind, if I do that, I would have to make sure that I change my stop point to here, and then I would have to make sure I put my start point right to here so that it just does join closest point. Now I want the E's to look the same, so I'm going to make sure that I do duplicate them as opposed to redigitizing them sometimes. So now I've done Lakeside, and I can now go and do the International. Now for the international, it's going to be the same thing. I'm just going to digitize this object here. I know it's going to join closest point to this one. Making sure I'm cutting my open ends short to adjust for the push and the pull compensation. Go from straight to curve when necessary. Making sure that all of my open ends are consistent. 
here I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to go to a digitize uh, open shape. I'm going to make sure that I am on a single stitch and I'm going to make sure that I go right across here up into that object there and then I'll go back to my digitize blocks and then I'll actually do this top of the T. Now the reason being is I'm going to come down here do this piece and then I know this is closest point I'm going to do this one as a last object because T's usually cross over top of each other then I can go to the E again the exact same thing I'm going to select this E I'm going to duplicate it I'm going to move it down really quickly the only thing I have to make sure of is that when I hit here my start is right here and that way I know that they are going to join closest point which I can see now I'm going to go to my next object and let's do this piece right here and then let's do this piece right here and then let's do this piece right here so I'm just doing each of these little blocks independently just being consistent this is why digitizing at a set scale is helpful because I see the same spacing over and over again all the time it never changes now I could have actually duplicated this a sometimes though it's just faster to do it manually so now I could come here and I could do the T I could come in here and say I want to select and let's select this entire T right here and now let's but I need to grab this one too so hold the control key and grab that one as well and let's just duplicate that and let's move that over so it's right here like that and now I just have to make sure that on that object I'm gonna move the stop position right to where the start is and that way I do not have anything that is going to obstruct it now same thing with here I could grab this object and I can come in here and grab all of these objects together and let's duplicate that one grab that and let's move it right into position so I know that it's in place exactly where it should be and let's go right about there and even though this one's higher on the artwork I want to keep it similar to the other ones so that's exactly where it should be and then let's go right here grab that last object go to an H I'm going to move this one right over to here and let's delete that one little line. Now that way I go straight across and I don't have anything that's going to disrupt it. Now I can go back to my digitized blocks and I can do the O. These are all curved inputs. Exaggerating a little bit of space on areas that look a little bit too thin. There's that one and now I can come in here and do the N do this part of the N and again I could come and duplicate that A if I wanted to or I can just quickly digitize it sometimes for me digitizing the letter is just as quick as it is to duplicate it and change the start and stop points do this one to here and then the last object I have to do is the L it's just one piece cutting short now everything joins closest point there's no unnecessary jumps or trims and now all I have to do is the last word and again I'll start right here I'm cutting short that object straight 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 go back to a curve curve around cut short the open end right to there and hit the enter same thing to here I love the way the software automatically joins closest point and that in this program that is a feature that you can turn on and off I can go to what I call old-school digitizing where I have to control the start and stop points as I'm digitizing it requires a little more of a thought process but this is sort of automated in its intelligence so it does automatically let you know and here I can just grab this one let's duplicate that and let's put that one right here let's see where we are without the true view and I am going to make sure that I come to this one hit the H 
make sure that I move right to here and that way I am joined closest point straight across I'm gonna make sure then that I do the same thing let's grab this point again let's duplicate that one and I'm gonna make sure that I duplicate it and go over to the other side here and I'm gonna do the same thing let's just move it over a tiny little fraction and there we go and then I'm gonna make sure that I have my H there's my start point that's exactly where I want it here's my stop point I want to make sure that they are start and stop so it joins across and with this one here I know that all I have to do is go back and do this one little piece here and it should automatically join closest point which it did so essentially that is my design and it is finished now if I turn back on my true view and I see all of the objects that I created I brought it into full screen it's a it's a pretty small design three and a half everything's there keep in mind that right now it is set on microfiber and this is one of the great things about the Wilcom platform or the hatch platform is I can go in at any time change the fabric assist and I know that we're going to want to put this on PK knit so I'm going to change it to PK hit the OK button and there it changed some of the density, the, the underlay, it changed the pull compensation, so I know I'm going to have better results on a specific fabric type. So the designs just come off the machine, and I made sure that I ran the sample in the same fabric type as what was going to go to production. In this situation, I don't want them to do 200 shirts and then find out that there's a problem with the design. So if you look at this, everything is nice and clean. The lettering is sharp and clean, the logo's clean, and most importantly, there's absolutely no hard stitches in the design. So this one I would chalk up as ready to go. So congratulations, you survived the mind of a digitizer. Hi everyone, John Deere here, and thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends. Also, to become part of the legacy, be sure to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified every time we release a new weekly video. So join the legacy now. It's no mystery, award-winning embroidery is our history.